Hey, badass business owners. Today, I want to take the concept that we talked about a few weeks ago of the six stages of a small business. And I want to tie in a really key part of that, of where people are when they move through it, when it comes to success and being successful. Now, One of the things you have to wrap your arms around is what is successful? Is successful having a million dollars worth of sales, 350,000 worth of sales? Uh, You know, what's the number successful about the amount of sales that you bring in? I want to tell you the answer is no, because honestly, you can make more money doing $350,000 than you can doing a million dollars. It all comes down to the numbers, right? You hear me talk about knowing your numbers all the time, because the reality is the success is really more tied towards the profitability. Now, before I keep going, I know there's going to be people that are thinking, and I did as well, you know, when I think of success, I think of, you know what, great customer service, excellent quality of product, uh, fantastic employees and taking care of them. That is absolutely true. But that's not the part of the success I want to talk about today. So please assume that I'm talking that that it's assumed that you're going to do fantastic customer service, you're going to have great install or product quality, whatever it is that you do, and that you have a wonderful, fantastic team. And we'll continue to talk about those topics on a their episodes. But for today, and for the sake of our six stages conversation, we're going to be talking about these stages, how it relates to the profitability. So you can help identify where you are in the six stages of a business. Now you might recall from the previous time we talked about this, the six stages are the launching, surviving, existing, growing, expanding, in ending. Those are the six stages of a business. And as you start to try to figure out where you are in all of this, one of the big components is money. And there's a lot of people that think they're more in the existing growing stage when the reality is they're still in the surviving stage. So let me kind of talk about this a little bit because you might be surprised that while parts of your business are in further along stages, the reality is at the end of the day, when it comes to the profitability, you're still stuck back at the surviving stage. And a lot of it has to do with your numbers, whether you know your numbers, uh, but more importantly, what you're putting into your pocket. All right. Now, part of the problem that we have is we get into this mentality that we focus on sales. I need more sales. I need more sales. And if I do more sales, I'm going to create more profit. We think that sales is the cure all for profit. Now, even when I was in my Home Depot days, we used to have this saying, sales cures all. Yes, having a lot of sales will at at, at some level, unless you are bleeding money, is going to create some types of profit, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's the right way to do it. Because you see, there's only so much of you to go around. There's only so much time in the day. And the only way you can really truly grow tons of sales for most of you is that you have to hire on people. Well, if you can't make enough money to even pay yourself, what makes you think that you can go pay someone else and get yourself out of this hole? It doesn't work like that. And I have people that reach out to me or that I coach that have been kind of caught in that, that, uh, that, circle of life, if you will, to where they think that if they just hire someone to take something off of their plate, they're going to make more money. And while yes, it's going to free up your time so you can start working on the business. If that person you hired doesn't create more profit at the end of the day, it's not going to work for you because their first thing they're going to do is they're going to suck more profit away from you because you're going to have to pay them. Okay. And you're going to have to do as much in sales uh, and that profit that's left. Because remember, the reason I want you to know your numbers is let's just say you're going to pay someone $200 a week. Well, they don't have to create $200 worth of sales. It comes down to that profitability line, right? So if on $200 of sales, you only make $10 a profit, well, guess what? You have to do 10 times as much in sales just to break even on what it is that you're going to pay them. This is why it's important that you know your numbers, because if your profitability is zero, guess what? Not only do they have to produce enough to just break even, now you're really trying to chase your tail to try to create even more sales, because if they take away what it is that you're doing, you're probably not getting paid as an employee in your business doing that, because now you're just living off of the profits of the company. And if the company has no profits, you're not really getting paid. And I've spoken to people that have done hundreds of thousands of dollars in sales, and they still have yet to be paid. You know what, there were times when I did a quarter of a million dollars in my ice cream shop and didn't get paid. 
So the the problem is you've got to be able to convert that into profits. Otherwise, it doesn't work. If all of your expenses and all of your costs take everything away that you're doing in sales, it, it's not a profitable thing for you. So let's tie this back in. Okay, so our first stage is the launching stage. Well, in the launching stage, you're really just getting that business up and going. You haven't really taken any sales. You're diving in. You're trying to figure out what you're going to do. You're putting your plan together and everything else. But once you launch the business, you immediately move into the surviving stage. And here's where the problem becomes. Because in the surviving stage, you're trying to get some sales going. And when what you're hoping is, is that when you sell that first hundred dollars, you're going to make some money. Most people in the surviving stage, they'll sell something for a hundred dollars. The cost will be 20 bucks. That makes them have 80 bucks and they put it in their pocket. They go spend it. And only later do they realize they have expenses to pay wrong way to pay yourself, right? Because our ultimate goal is for any work you do in the business as an employee, you get paid and then you get your true owner's draw at the end with the profitability of the company. Ultimately, that's the goal, okay? Ultimately, you own a business, not a job. As long as you only pay yourself out of the cost of being an employee, you're still just bought a job. So a lot of people in the surviving stage are still stuck in the they've created a job for themselves phase. Here's where the problem comes. Remember I was telling you there's people out there that make hundreds of thousands of dollars, but yet they never get beyond paying themselves as an employee. And in some cases, they're not paying themselves at all, just like I was mentioning. So if you're doing a hundred thousand dollars, but at the end of the day, you're not really making any money. You're paying everybody else and you've brought on people to help grow your business and you're making sure they get paid because we have this tendency to want to make sure our employees get paid before we get paid. What's happened is once again, you've created this business. You're living off of other money you have. It might be your savings. It might be your spouse. You're living some other way. You're not living off of your business. You are still in surviving. That business cannot stand on its own. So unless somebody can buy your business, take it over, and make money, you are in the surviving stage. I don't care how much you're doing. If you're doing a million dollars and you're still not getting paid because of that, you are stuck in the surviving phase. You know what? And the problem is you're working 50, 60, 70 hours and you're working all this time, but there's just no money. As you know, about 90% of the businesses will be out of business in 10 years. That's the statistics. 50% of people are out of business within the first year or two, and they are stuck in this surviving stage, which is why the business fails, because you can only work so long without making any money. So think about you know, surviving is just what it sounds like. You're barely surviving. Your head's barely above water and you're constantly feeling like you are drowning at any minute. And it just seems sometimes so much easier if you would just quit and roll up the business than it is anything else. And this is where a lot of folks, like I said, reach out to me because they're just tired and you know, they don't know what to do. They don't know what direction to go. But I will tell you, there is light at the end of the tunnel because there's also a lot of people that reach out to me that say, hey, you know what? I I got reinvigorated uh, by my business. I started uh, diving into my numbers. I started learning things. And now I've fallen in love with my business again. I'm making more money. Um, I'm doing all these different things. Now, I'm not saying that's because of me. No, what I'm saying is they took the chance on themselves and they dived in and they started to learn their business numbers. They started to make better decisions and they moved to the next stage, which is the existing stage. Now, the existing stage doesn't isn't bad. I know some people will say, well, I don't want to just exist. Um, Believe it or not, that's how most people go through life is they just exist. Now, listen, when I talk about the existing stage of a business, it just means that it is doing steady, eddy kind of things. It's a good, solid business. People are using it. Um, You know, someone's created a really nice life for themselves. They can live off of what it is that they make. They're not really focused on the numbers yet, though, because they get paid really well as an employee in that business. Business. So, you know what? They, they're able to pay themselves that two, three thousand dollars, four thousand dollars, whatever it is, every single month, but they're not paying attention that the, the reality is they're only paying themselves as an employee. They've never really built the business to be able to pay themselves as a business owner. But you know what? They can take time off, they can take a vacation, you know, they can breathe. Whereas in the surviving stage, you never got a day off, you never got to breathe. What was a vacation again? You forgot what those are. But once again, in the existing stage, a lot of people stay here. They stay here for years and years and years and years. 
it's not bad as long as you are okay with creating a job for yourself. So if that's what your ultimate goal is, more power to you. Get At least get into the existing stage where you're not swimming in, struggling, uh, trying to make it. So in the existing stage, when it comes to profitability and the money, you're, you're doing okay. You're, you've, you've at least got your pricing the right way and you've got your jobs the right way to where you're able to take a decent wage out of the business and you're perfectly okay with that. But if you want to get to stage four, the growing stage, uh, this is one where you're going to have to start paying yourself a little bit differently. Now, please don't mistake the fact that you do grow under the existing stage. You are still getting better. It's just your business isn't necessarily growing. Your profits aren't growing and you're not growing. Um, so when we get to the growing stage, we're really talking about all kinds of stuff. We're talking about that business being able to grow and get bigger, but yet your role in the doing piece of it gets smaller. You are trying to work your way out of the employee part of it and really get paid as a business owner. And it is at this stage where somebody has this aha moment. They really start diving into their business numbers. They really start understanding what their cost of goods are, what their expenses are. And they can tell you that, hey, my profitability is 20%, 30%, 10%, but they at least know what that number is. And now when they're, they're making calculated decisions for the business, they are realizing that, hey, this job needs to uh, give off 20% profit when I go to bid it out because now they might be making two, three thousand dollars as an employee, but they're also making two, three thousand dollars as a business owner. And it is at this stage that they are bringing on select people to try to help them get out of that employee stage. So they might hire someone that answers the phone, someone that helps do the bidding, someone who does the bookkeeping. Maybe they hire a couple people to be on the team, but the team is going to be doing more of the the doing aspects of it while they're more um, stepping back out of that role. So they still have one foot in, one foot out, but they're allowing the business to grow and take on even more business because now they're being paid both ways, both as an employee when they have to be, and it might be 20, 30, 40, even 40 hours is better than 60, 70 hours, but they're also making money finally as a business owner. If you think about it, their focus starts to lead to more profits now because they're paying attention, because they're working more on the business versus and they're making smarter business decisions. They're finally acting like a CEO. They're not just getting paid, like I said, as an employee. So that's a really cool thing. Um, and they're spending most of their time working on the business. And at this stage, they have to decide, is that where they want to stay in the growing stage or do they eventually want to get to the expanding stage? Now, the expanding stage when it comes to profitability is something completely different because in the expanding stage, this is the world domination, as I call it. It's where you want to open up multiple trucks. You want to have multiple brick and mortar. You want to be in multiple cities. You kind of want to become like one of those big box retailers, not so much the, the big box itself, but you want to be like the George Brazils of the world or people with multi trucks and fleets that are out there. And you want to go into multiple towns and have that ability to do it. But I will tell you that at this stage as the business owner, they rarely, if ever, are in the doing stage. They can't because now they're the conductor of the orchestra. They are being 100% paid as an owner. And in the expanding stage, this is where a lot of people can make money if they eventually want to sell the business, which we'll get to in a minute. But at this stage, the main thing that they're focused on is growing the business and expanding the business and going into these different areas. But from a profitability standpoint, their percentage, maybe their percentage was 20% when they were solo or had one or two people. Now it might be down to 15%, but this is where that sales cures all because now it becomes also about those dollars because even at a lower profit margin, because now they've hired more employees and they have more equipment, they can make a really good living because the business is creating $100,000, $200,000 in profitability every single year. And now they can pay themselves out of that. So the expanding stage, very rarely do I have anybody that's listening to the podcast that's in this stage because they're at a completely different level with how they're running their business. And I'm not saying I don't welcome them. I want them definitely to listen as well because a lot of what we do is rinse and repeat. We just tweak some things in our business. But for a lot of you, this is your goal. You want to get to the point where you have this very large business that is taking over a lot of different areas. Well, as you can tell, the biggest difference is you've got to get out of the doing 
of the work in your business. And you got to be really focused on those business numbers because that's how you get to this stage. And for those of you that have dreams of taking your business that big, this is what you need to know. Now in stage six, this is the ending stage. And this is where a business um, is either goes out of business or is sold. So for example, in the surviving stage, let's go all the way back. Remember, this is somebody that just is not paying themselves. They're just not making enough money to survive. Well, as I said, 50% of businesses die at this part and they close up shop. Well, guess what? They skip three, four, and five and they go immediately to stage six and they are now ending. Now, other businesses get here from the existing and the growing stage because they created a good solid business for themselves. They make good money either as an employee or as a uh, employee slash CEO. And they're going to either end most of the people that are stuck in the existing stage. It's not worth someone buying unless they want to buy a job for themselves, in which case they might buy the business and they're going to dive right in. I know people that have done that all the time. I did it when I bought my ice cream shop. The guy wasn't getting paid. His, his business was bleeding money. So when I bought it, I had the intention of turning it around. That was a struggling, surviving business that got a second life, mainly because it was a franchise, which is the only reason. So sometimes, for example, let's just say you have a thriving carpet cleaning business and you've decided to move on and you want to sell it to somebody else, but yet you you let them know that, hey, I have to work every day in that business. It's an existing business. Uh, it makes a decent living for somebody. They might want to sell it at that point versus just closing the doors. Some people have to close the doors because it really doesn't have any value other than the equipment in the business. Because if someone buys it and they just want to own it and be the owner and get paid as an owner, well, if it's not making any money, they can't do that. Typically, it's going to be somebody else who wants to uh, have a job that they can jump right into and start at least replacing the income that they had and then they can grow it from there. Same thing when someone's in the growing stage now, they're making money both as an employee and as a business owner. Someone might tap into that because they can, once again, they can jump in and maybe not make as much as an owner, but there's got potential there. So when it comes to the ending stage, it could happen a lot of different ways. It could be the business just folds and goes away, or somebody sees enough profitability or potential for profitability, and they buy that business. Sorry, so that's the end of the stages. But my main point that I want to get through is when you think about all the different stages, it's really important that you tie in the financial piece of it of profitability. Because a lot of times we think we have a great business because we're growing, we're getting to that quarter of a million dollars, half a million dollars and everything else. But the reality is you're really not moving along in the stages until the profitability comes along with you. And the whole purpose of this episode is to make you take a step back and ask yourself, how am I being paid? Am I just being paid as an employee in my business? If so, you are in the existing stage or the surviving stage. If you are being paid partly as an employee, partly as an, a, an owner, well, congratulations, you've moved into the growing stage. But here's the thing, you're not going to get it. It, it. it kills me to have to crush people's dreams sometimes when they call me up and they're like, I want to go in this market and I want to go this market and I want to go in this market. And when we dive into their numbers, they're still being paid as an employee. You cannot bypass everything and jump into the expanding stage before you even learn how to pay yourself as an owner. So this is why it's important that the sooner, no matter what stage you're in, you start learning your business numbers. Because if you start learning your business numbers and start understanding how profitability plays into it, the quicker you're going to move through this. Because I can teach you all the skills in the world on how to create more sales, but all the sales in the world are not going to replace bad business decisions. They're not going to replace poor processes and um, systems in your business. They're not going to replace profitability in your business. You've got to be more profitable. People that are in that expanding stage, I'm telling you, they're dialed into the processes. They've got their systems working really well. They've got the teams. They're doing all these things right because they've realized it adds to the bottom line of the profitability. So, I'm starting to rattle and you know I don't like doing that. So my main goal at this point in time is that you take a step back and you're honest with yourself and you take an honest look and ask yourself, how well do I know my business numbers? Am I just dabbling? Do I check once in a blue moon? Am I getting paid as an employee more than anything? Am I getting paid at all? Let's start with that one. Because if you're not getting paid at all, I'm sorry, you're stuck in surviving. I don't care how great of a business you have. You are still surviving because you're not paying yourself. You're living off of something else. You're not a business owner. Okay. You're just somebody who's babysitting a business because until you start getting money and putting money in your pocket, you haven't 
grown that business. Now, that's strategic for some people. If they're in the first year or two of that business, it makes total sense. But as you grow, something's got to give, something's got to change. You've got to be able to get into the existing where at least you're getting paid as an employee, and then you can work your way to being paid as an owner. So let's wrap this puppy up get out there, start taking an honest look in the mirror, figure out where you're at. And if you want, throw me an email, send it to Tammy at localsmallbusinesscoach.com. Tell me where you're at. Let it loose. Say, you know what? I'm ticked off. I'm only at this stage. I don't know what I need to do. Sometimes you don't need me to tell you anything. You just need to be able to get it off your chest and be honest with yourself. And a lot of times when people are honest with themselves and they get it off their chest, they get ticked off enough that they start making differences and changes in their business. All right. That's one of the main reasons why I put the whole learn your business numbers course together and why I I sell it for so cheap. I just want you to start. That's my whole mission is to get you at least started. Okay. And and this isn't to try to sell courses. That's not what this is about. This is about you opening up your eyes. I don't care if you go to the YouTube channel and start learning for free. I don't care. I just want you to start learning your business numbers. I want you to start paying attention. I want you to start getting paid. All right. I've been there. I've done that. I've run a business where I wasn't making any money. And guess what? Now that I have a business that I make a lot of money at, and it's a completely different feeling when you're making money versus when you're not. Okay. And sometimes it's not because of you. Like I said, when I've told my story and anybody that's listened to the story, I was busting my butt. I had a great running store. But if the numbers don't work, the numbers don't work. Okay. If you can't create the profitability off of the business model, you have to change either the business model or you have to change the business or you need to go into a different field. It's not giving up on your dream. It's being realistic about what you can and cannot do. I want you to be successful. I want you to make a six-figure income. I want you all to, to, to have your dream and to hit your goals and to do everything else. But it really starts, it, it's not going to happen if you don't start learning your business numbers. Like I said, I'm rattling. I'm done. I'm ending it. Reach out if you want to. I'd love to hear from you. But in the meantime, let's start making some money, okay? Shall we? Let's start moving you through these stages of the business and let's get you into the, the, the stages that are much more more profitable for you. All right. You work way too hard not to make more money or to make any money. All right. All right. You can see I get real passionate about this. I want to keep talking. I'm going to stop. All right. Get out there. Be the badass that I know you are. Hey, badass business owner, before you go, as you know, I'm a huge believer in you knowing your business numbers. After all, it isn't about how much you sell. It's about what you keep. And the best way to grow your profits is to start diving in and understanding those business numbers. To help you on this journey, I have created the Know Your Business Numbers course. We will walk through how to read your profit and loss statement. You'll learn the key calculations that'll help ensure that you're making a healthy profit on all of your products or services, plus a ton of other good stuff that'll help you learn how to use those business numbers to create even more sales and profits. Just check out the link below in the show notes or visit knowyourbusinessnumberscourse.com. So if you're ready to increase those profits, it's time you start diving into your business numbers.